What's going on, y'all? Love and Hip Hop New York, Season 5, Episode 15. Surprise, surprise, bitch, this is the f- season finale. It's about got damn time. So it was something up in my head. The fuck? Okay. So, um, let's get into it. They start this episode off with Johnny Blaze. I don't know. She's, like, having a self-reflection. You know, even though the stuff didn't work out between me and Rich and the management and us being lovers, the one thing that I can always fall back on and who's always been there for me is my music. I was like, okay, you know, Johnny Blaze's little song, it was cute for what it was. She was playing it. It was cute for what it was. I give her that. But, um, yeah, I thought they was going to go on something deep, you know, but that was just it. They just wanted us to hear her sing and play the piano. I said, oops, okay. Then we move on to Diamond. You know, see, I just don't know what it is. First with Cisco and then Rich. It's like, you know, what's going on with the men in my life? So I have to call the person that I know that's going to give me the real and listen to what he say because I know he's going to call me out, my daddy. And I said, Lord Jesus, Daryl Strawberry, you know, he's sitting down there. Ch- <sighs> Some people just, when I look at them, I just be like, whew. Thank God you got money. That's all I'm going to say on that one. Because ain't no way in hell. Mm-mm. But um, anyway, he was like, apparently he's a pastor now. Okay, Reverend. Um, You know, she was basically saying how she going to tell her daddy that she came out here to New York and it's not really working out. And she was coming out here to model. But what she was really coming out here for mostly was for this relationship with this man. And then when she told her daddy the child catch it, she told him about Cisco and the fact that he said that he was going to help her model and get all this st- um 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 get get her modeling shit off the ground and you know care for her, love for her. That is talking about marriage and shit. And I'm sitting here like, did he really say that? I'm thinking back in the way back like, I don't think he said that. You the one that made it seem like you was coming out here to model. And he didn't even know your ass was coming out. Cisco ain't say shit about no goddamn, unless it was some shit. God put it down in the comments. I'm like, girl, why are you lying? But okay, you got to make yourself look good and sound good in front of your parents. Because you know they already thinking that, bitch, you dumb as fuck. My question is, since you're having all these difficulties in um, New York, and we don't see the modeling shit popping off. Where your child at? Did you go see her? Have you visited her? That's all that I really want to know. You know, since we complain about the fucking men in your life. And, you know, you got your daddy talking about some. You don't need no boy. You need a man. And all this stuff. And yada, yada, yada. I'm like, baby, I understand that your daughter, that's your daughter. But let's not just put it on all the dudes, Okay. Cisco did some fuck shit, Rich did some fuck shit, but your daughter is crazy as shit, and she ain't innocent in all this either. But, um, I guess he gonna support her. Then you got, uh, Peter up in the studio, some song, and it's talking about Tara can do better, Amina can do better, and all this stuff. Girl, okay, whatever, get the fuck out of here, don't nobody give a shit. Tara come up in there like, all the stuff that goes on with me and Peter... I can put all that aside, but I can't hide the fact that Peter, you know, he is a good producer. And I want him to help me with my business and, you know, produce some things for the group that I'm with. I said, okay, you know, and that's what she wanted to do, some group EXO or whatever. And um, Peter like, what? You still support my music? That's what's up, yo. If she could forgive me for doing all this and coming to, you know, all the shit I put her through and still come to me, look like it's still some hope there. And I was like, nah, bruh. Nah, bruh. Calm me the fuck down. Ain't telling her what happened with Amina and all that shit. And, you know, she was like, basically, you need to find out what the fuck it is that you really want. Okay? Because you putting her through all this bullshit. And it's just, you got to stop it. All right? And I just said, Peter... So, you know, Diamond goes over and she meet up with uh Daryl. Daryl. No. She meets up with Cisco. They at like this smoker's lounge or whatever the fuck they at. You know. And I was like, bitch, you better not bring your ass up in here. This place look fancy as fuck. Like, they'll lock your ass up themselves if you act up in this white people establishment. You know. Um, But she was calm, cool, and collected. I was like, are you trying to mature a little bit? Just a little bit? Of course, Cisco. 
you know, sometimes when I see Cisco, like, he pro he responds to shit. Like, I probably will respond. Like, I'm not going to give you all my energy. Cisco was still trying to make it seem like either he was giving you the bedroom voice and the bedroom eyes. And he was just like, yeah, you know. So, I was just going through a lot of stuff. And, um, yeah, I was just sitting there like, Cisco, the fuck is going on? You trying to get her in bed or something? But, you know. She basically said, so she had this talk with her dad and she just wanted to know, you know, her dad basically said she needs to fix her mistakes and the stuff that's going on with her. So, you know, what is it about me that made the relationship go wrong? Like, what did I do so I can know what I need to fix and all that stuff? I said, you got to go and talk. Girl, okay, Diamond, I guess. But, um, you know, he was like, basically, in the beginning when we first started this, Everything was cool, so I can't really say that you did anything wrong, you know? Did you even love me? Because, you know, sometimes it just felt like you didn't even love me. Like, did you? What? You ain't never loved me? Okay, well, that that seems plausible. I mean, I get it, but if you never loved me, why? why, why? It was like, you know, see, I never told you this. My baby mama, you know... She just got fed up with the bullshit and she took our two kids and she just left, you know, in the midst of me being with you. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me you was shacking up with your baby mama while you was dating me? Yeah. See, Cisco, why you be doing this shit? You got issues and stuff and you need to stop fucking bitches around, okay? Why you need to have this bitch and that bitch? You need to get your shit together. That's cool. I'm already working on it. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, Cisco, stop fucking playing. And I couldn't get too mad at him because I would have said some shit like that. You know? <laughs> I ain't finna give you what you want. I ain't finna break down and be like, no, damn, you right. And it's just like, I just can't. I'm just sorry, you know? And she, she was just basically like, you know, well, I can't be friends with you. But if we see each other, because I'm staying out here in New York, let us be cordial. And they kind of hugged or whatever. Then we get to this scene with Chrissy. She like, you know, build a business is booming. So I need to find a new model search place. And, you know, Chin come in. I need to talk to him. They talking. And she was like, see, look. I brought an apartment. You didn't want to move in. You let me see your daddy. Like, we was about to actually do some stuff and go somewhere in this relationship. Basically, you know, you not finna get a divorce and all this stuff. You don't want to be with me. Did I say I didn't want to be with you? Did I say I wasn't going to do this? You want me to get shit when you want me to get shit. You know, it don't work that way. I get a fucking divorce when I'm ready to get a divorce. I said, you not ready to get a divorce and you just drinking her along, okay? So, that's why the fuck she acting the way she is. You know, I was totally here. For once, all the way, for Chrissy. Yes, Chrissy was dumb as fuck because we all could see that this man was stringing her along and she was falling for it like, it's like, girl, you too old for all this bullshit. But, you know, they say love is blind and take over your mind. What you think is love is truly not. You need to elevate and find. Okay? E. Mm. I don't even know you, but I, you know, listen, I can't do it. I ain't gonna do it today. I ain't got the energy. But, uh, she just snapped. She just snapped and he and the uh, thing, you know, I let her do this. And Chrissy, we need to know I'm giving her the love, all the love that I got, okay? My daddy sick. I'm still going through a divorce. I got kids. And I still found a way to love her. I said, no, you didn't, okay? This is just love slash infatuation that you probably um in a home to stay in when you come to New York. That's basically what the fuck it is, okay? And, um... She was just, and you put me through all this, and I need to go, okay? Because you just doing all this bullshit. You just stringing me the fuck along, cheek. It was like, bitch, okay, and you do what the fuck you got to do, and I'm going to do what the fuck I got to do. He know he hurt, but you know, nigga be a nigga. I ain't going to show that shit. But, Chrissy, it been time for you to go, okay? Mm -mm. So, Peter meet up with his friend, Hasim or whatever, you know, because he's still thinking about trying to get Amina back. He got the ring and all this stuff, trying to talk to him. And, you know, I seen want to talk to him about the fact that, yo, you remember Oren? Yeah, I've been seeing some Instagram posts about him and he hooking up with Amina and they managers and shit. What? I ain't finna let this dude manage my wife. And I'm just sitting here like, Peter, he, I'm glad he said, well, maybe this is a little payback for me and my bullshit. I was like, a little bit. A little bit. She got the right to choose who her manager is, but I'm surprised she didn't tell him 
But who gives a fuck? I ain't, uh, girl, I ain't putting too much into um, Peter and his bullshit. But, um, Precious Paris was up there on the stage. You know, she was doing her thing, rehearsing. She got Kid Capri, famous Kid Capri, on the DJ, um, you know, rehearsing with her. Sounded nice for what she was doing, okay? And she sounded like she got some talent or whatever, and it's just sitting there going to fucking waste. And we already know that she has an issue with Rich and she has expressed this with sin and all this stuff. And now she was like, every time I do something, I have to initiate the, you know, stuff. Rich is not the manager. He's not acting like a manager. He's not doing nothing for me. So therefore, I'm over it. I got to let him go and I'm going to let him come in and I'm going to tell him and see what shit is supposed to be like, you know. I had to pay for this studio session on my own. I had to get, use my own contacts to get this done. Not my manager, me. Because my manager wasn't around. And when Rich was talking, he was trying to make it seem like, oh, it's so complex. You know, you out here doing videos and you doing this and you doing that. So it's like Precious Paris is irrelevant to Rich Dollar, uh, dollar Management or whatever the fuck his crew is. And I'm sitting here like... Well, she wouldn't have to do that if you was actually involved, okay? And that's what she was trying to get at. And I actually like the way that Par Precious Paris did this, you know. It was totally different from the Johnny Blaze situation. And he was like, damn, I lost two artists in the same day, but that's how shit go. And I'm surprised he took it well, and that was cool, you know, on a semi-professional level. Because they did not get pissed off at one another. She put her differences down on the table. He accepted it and he moved on. And they left on the cordial note like that. She did say, you know, I'm thinking like, why am I not getting the respect and getting the time? You know, I see you out with your other artists and you're hosting with them and you're doing this. But I'm not getting the time. It's like, wait a minute. Is it because I'm not fucking him? I ain't giving him head or some shit? And he was like, trust me, that ain't it. And I was like, oops. <laughs> but she was like, you know, it is what it is. But we can't work together no more. And he was cool with it. And I said, okay, he got just a little bit of respect for not just going off. Because, you know, some people get in their feelings like, what? And I'm like, well, technically, she can hire you because you're the manager. And she can fire you. And that's exactly what she did. So, Cisco. <laughs> Cisco is so fucking dramatic. He is like, God damn, do you got a puss between your legs? Oh, my God. He's sitting there in the um, window at a hotel in Atlanta. Okay, of course, I knew it was in Atlanta. And he like... You know, so every time I look back on my life, it just seems like I got a whole bunch of pent up anger. I just don't handle stuff well. And you know, if I can say that I have one love in my life, that was Tasha. And I need to do what I got to do to make things right. Because she holding my kids against me. She can't, she not letting me see them. So she finally agreed to let me talk to her. I said, okay, Cisco. Okay. <laughs> What? Stop playing. And then when Tasha come in there, I understand Tasha was pissed off. And she was basically like, he was trying to say, what can I do to fix this? I'm sorry and all this stuff. And she was telling him, you can't do shit to fix this because you don't know how bad you hurt me. Oh, you, I don't know how bad. I don't know what this feel like. I done lost everything in my life. And I was like, who fault is that? That's your fault. And she said, you know, you grew up without a parent, uh, 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 parents, you know, in the household like that. And when you growing up with shit like that, you should be trying to make sure that your kids don't have to grow up like that. You, you should be trying to not do the same thing and shit like that. You want to be better. And I said, you better tell us, Tasha. You better tell us, ass. And, um, Miss Tasha was just over it. Okay, Miss Tasha was like, bitch, you didn't hurt me for the last goddamn time. And I got the goddamn kids. And let me tell you something. I understand, because she was like, every action has a fucking consequence. And I said, yeah, that's so true. But my thing of it is, if Tasha is really holding them kids and not letting him see his kids, I think that's wrong, because those are his kids. And if he wants to be in his kid's life, let him be in his kid's life. I hate when women use, you know, the children as a pawn because they're hurt. The children, yes, he fucked around. Yes, he they father, but he are the kid's father, and they should have their father in their lives, Okay. So, when she said some shit, I forget what he said, but she was like, nigga, no, or some shit like that, and threw the water, and he got pissed. She didn't throw it at him. She swiped the shit off the table, which made him pissed off, and he get up, and it was so calculated. He literally got up, looked at whatever was in his hand. Hmm, should I throw it this direction or that direction? He did kind of 
And then he just turned around and threw it there. And then he looked at the couch. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. Who gonna pay for this? Oh, fuck it. VH1 staff here. They got this. And I said, motherfucker, are you serious? And they like, go downstairs. Tasha trying to fight him. And I said, girl, get out of here. Y'all go somewhere. I understand your frustration, but y'all don't have to be tearing up other people's shit. Okay, come on now. But anyway, whatever with them. Cisco, you fucked up. Tasha, don't be using them kids at the motherfucking pond. I get it. Then you got Peter trying to take Amina to this spa to work on a relationship. Trying to give her this ring because he heard about Orion. And, you know, for Hasim and all this shit. I hope I'm saying the dude's name right. If I'm not, H. Okay, there you go. And... You know, Amina, on the other hand, is like, so we at this spa, and I'm going to tell Peter about me hooking up with my um, Orion because, Orin, because, you know, I'm going to do my music. And I was like, okay, girl, you and Peter are on two different wavelengths. Peter sitting there like, I want my family back. I want to show you that I love you, that I love the baby. Amina like, girl, let me tell you something. Skirt on that one, okay? And I'm back with uh, Oren, all right? And that's my main focus right now, my music. And he was like, I think he a snake. I think he a sneak. I think he a slime ball. And I want to knock his phone off the hook. I said, how old do you have to be to say some shit like that? I want to knock his phone off the hook. Like, what? And I said, Peter, you can't really get mad because technically you pushed her there. You pushed her there. And now that you feel like and see that you really are losing somebody... That you supposed to have been taken care of and supposed to have been loving and all that stuff. Now you want to say so freely in the confessional that, you know, any man would be pissed off if the, their wife's ex-boyfriend comes back in the picture. Now she's your wife and you publicly claiming that, okay, hmm, took you forever to get to this point. Now that you see that you're losing her. And he was like, you know, well... I got this ring, you know, we had these other rings and we threw them away and did whatever. You can take this ring, you can wear it, you can wear it as a necklace, you can give it to baby Corey. You know, I just want to give it to you. She was like, so what do you think this is? Are you using this ring just to, you know, think like it's going to fix everything? And she was like, no, no. He was like, well, maybe we just ran our course. And I said, bitch, you think? You think? And I was just shocked at Amina. Okay, Amina. You getting balls three season in on your... Oh, okay, girl. But at least you trying. You trying. So, to end this season, you know, um, Yandy had the baby shower. And, you know, Mona made an appearance, okay? And, you know, she did the little commitment ceremony. Had in DC and little man DC come up there. It was cute. She was reading her notes off the phone. That was a little tacky, but, you know, it is what it is. Because, um, I mean, I don't want to memorize that shit either. But, okay, well, fuck that. But, you know, that was cute. And they do their little synopsis of everybody reflecting on their life. Press, uh, Precious pair is like, my music needs to be heard and all this shit. Rich like, oh, Malika going off the record and all this shit. With Sin Face, we the shit. Girl, they come up in there. The child peep Sin came up in there with her new boo. I said, okay, they look cute together. You know what? Speaking of Sin and Erica, Erica. Listen, the anniversary of Selena's death is tomorrow. And, oh my God. I just... Bitty, bitty, bum, ba, come la floor, okay? If I can fall in love. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. We're not going to do it. And I just had this flash of something because I was, the camp, the TV, I was looking at something on TV and the commercial came up for the real. And Adrian gonna be on there singing, if I can fall in love, no. No, girl. You better stop playing. And that's all I'm gonna say. And the only reason why I'm gonna watch that shit, because Suzette is gonna be on there tomorrow. That's the fuck it. But anyway, back to the shit. R.I.P. to my bitch. But, um, you know, I had a moment. Like, for real, for real. That just... Ooh, okay. So, fuck that bitch. I'm so, I'm, fuck this. Yolanda's still alive, okay? She's still in jail and she's still alive. Ain't nobody slit that bitch yet, okay? Come on now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, we back on track. We finna end this shit. Well, who else did some shit? Erica talking about how she want to be a perfect wife and mother to her kids and all that shit. Boo-boo, boo-boo. 
Amina, she left Peter. She over his bullshit. Tyra, like, I'm finna teach my men, uh, my um, boys that I'm raising men. And I love boys. And, you know, Yandy had her baby at the end. And that was the end of the fucking season. Thank God. But, um, y'all tell me how y'all felt. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.